so much. You may be seated. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, the most gracious God, even this morning as we gather in this situation, that we know that it has affected us deeply with pains of the loss of our brother, the one that was loved by the family, by the church, by the whole nation. As we gather, mighty God, we seek your comfort to come through. And we also pray that your wisdom, my Lord, be, paid, be poured upon us as we lead this process this morning and this service. Come through, Lord, manifest in am amongst us and lead us, Lord, in all aspects of your glory that all at the end of the day shall be comforted and we shall now say, glory be given to you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Baba wetu ose zulwini Mali patengo Uwe itamalako Uvu kaliba Koma ufige Ilanda koma Yeziwe
thank you so much uh, the entire leadership of the church i want to acknowledge the entire leadership of the church thank you so much the leadership of government represented here by our premier members of the executive committee the leadership of our alliance structures the entire leadership of the leagues the leadership that is coming from different formations and organizations around the area that you are in, our veterans. Thank you so much for this uh, day, as I already indicated. I'll start formally with the program. As indicated in the program, my name is Panyaza Sufi. I'm the MEC for Education in our province. We'll try to drive this program as quickly as possible without putting pressure on anyone so that in the ultimate end we can bid farewell to a leader, to a person that made some of us to be who we are today and a person that contributed so much to our struggle for freedom and liberation in our country. We'll start with the reading of the obituary. This task has been assigned to Mr. Tsitso Musungutu, and immediately after that, we'll have a musical item, and that will be followed by a tribute by the family, and that task has also been ass assigned to Miss Queen Musungutu. So can we start with the obituary and call upon Mr. Tsitso Musungutu to come and share the obituary with us? Can we all rise? Kita o baka dia, kiwi hallelujah. Kita ri hallelujah. Oh hallelujah, hallelujah. Usi. to greet uh, the leadership of the church, uh, the leadership of the ANC, and everyone who came here today. Uh, thank you. Um, I can begin. Khabis uh, Nsunkutu was born on 11 October 1950 in the Free States as the first of four children by Tito and Makote Nsunkutu. The family moved to Johannesburg when Khabis was two years old and settled in Old Pimville. Khabis started his primary education at Bantu Combined School and completed his high school education at Musi High School. At the age of 14, his father passed on and this terribly hampered his dreams to further his education. He would sell goods in the streets and chains of Soweto to assist his family during this hardship. After completing his matric, 
Khabisi enrolled at Tokom's Technical College to study telephone uh, technician. Upon completion, he became one of the first black qualified telecommunications technicians. Subsequently, he was given full-time employment. In 1972, he met his would-be wife, Nongaba Kivit, and he subsequently married on 21st December 1977. They were blessed with five children, four boys and one girl. In 1979, one month after their second child was born, Khabisi supported and encouraged his wife to complete her matric. He continued to support her in her post matric studies. Khabisi was a visionary and truly believed that mothers, sisters, and daughters should be empowered. He was undoubtedly a loving father to his children, but furthermore, he was a loving father to the community and a loyal servant of the people. Khabisi is worthy of the honor as one of the best leaders to be, to be produced by the struggle for democracy in South Africa. His early political life during the middle 70s and early 80s was grounded in roots, in grassroots civic organization in Soweto and beyond. He is the descendant of the community of 10 that skillfully articulated local civic grievances as part of the national liberation struggle. He served as the executive committee member of the Soweto Civic Oga Association, Civic Association of Southern Transvaal, or CAST, and later became the deputy president of the UDF, United Democratic Front. He was the brains behind the building blocks for the formation of a progressive, left-leaning national organization, SANCO, which later became the grassroots organization machinery of the UDF. One of the strengths of the civic organizations was the creation of street communities, which ensured that ordinary people were able to get involved in matters affecting their community. OR Tambo referred to these street communities as organs of people's power. Khabisi understood the link between the underground wing of the ANC and the covert structures of the broad liberal movement. The, Ma the Mandela Marshall Plan was an integral part of, the, of his teachings and all the structures he belonged to. The leadership positions he held attracted the highest wrath of the apartheid regime. He was often harassed, detained, and tortured during that painful part of our history. Nsunkutu was an international trade unionist who played a pivotal role in building trade unions at home and abroad. He was one of the founding members of Congress of South African Trade Unions, COSATU, and was the first general secretary of, and president of the Post and Telecommunica Telecommunication Workers Association. He served the labor movement over four decades in various positions, including COSATU, EXCO, and CEC member. He led the formation of the Militant Post and Telecommunication Workers Association, POTWA, in 1986, now known as the Communication Workers Union, CWU, where he played a key role in ensuring that workers were not only united, but were at the forefront of dislodging the repressive apartheid regime and fighting for workers' rights across the globe. He was arrested under, 20, under, 20, under Section 29 of the Terrorism Act in 1988, whilst he was the president of the Post and Tele Telecommunication Workers Union. A worker by day and a soldier by night was literally the practice of what he preached. The international isolation of apartheid was one of the global missions to break the spine of the racist regime. Khabisi was part of the International Federation of Post and Telecommunications Telegraph International. PTTI, and joined forces with the African Free Trade Union, ICFTU, from a liberal to, institu to institution to join the progressive agenda towards the unity of workers across the globe. The global trade union platform was exploited to the maximum international solidarity against a legitimate government. He upheld the COSATU principle of one union one federation as a trademark in his international work. 
his trade union involvement was a huge benefit to the African National Congress. Following South Africa's democratic elections in 1994, Khabisi became a member of parliament, and he later joined the Gauteng Provincial Legislature in 1995. He served as the MPL until 2011, when he retired from public office. Between 1999 and 2011, Khabisi also served uh, a member of, as a member of the, as the member of Executive Council in the Gauteng Provincial Government, holding various portfolios. As a public representative and member of the Executive Council, Khabisi served the people with distinction, honor, and loyalty. Khabisi knows only the ANC philosophy. The ANC hegemony was his uncompromising mission. No one he touched escaped his indoctrination. He died a strong man with no regrets for what he stood for. The civic movement is proud to have produced such a fine cater of our time. Khabisi lost his life on the 24th of December, 2018. He is survived by his wife, Nongaba, and children. May the soul of our departed leader rest in peace. Robala Kahoto, perhaps. Thank you so much. You may be seated. We'll take a musical item. And during that period, I'll ask Mekwin Musungudu on behalf of the family to come forward. Libongwe Gavantu Libongwe Los Ali Koi Kama Eli Shenga no, na libo we, libo we, no libo we, libo we. leadership of the church, grace and peace to the bishop and to his wife, to the rest of the church leaders, to different organizations that are represented here. I'd also like to greet family and friends that are here. I'm standing here representing Ba Nabantate Musungut. So I'd like to make a slight correction. So I am a daughter to him, but I am Shahani now because I'm married to the Shahanis. So this happened on the 24th of December, 2018. And the Bible says God knows our end from our beginning. So God knew it was going to happen. We didn't. For us, it is an end to an era where papa, kapareri papi, kapa, tununu. Then there's not going to be a response. Go high. So, nirimita papa, papa. It was up to from from my older brother to to me. Then came Tito, Tito, Amovita Papi, because Mama Kimani, so uh, Araima the two. 
And then he then had grandchildren. So my eldest daughter, Horisang, to her it sounded like Dununu. So she started calling him Dununu, and then we would all call him Dununu. So Kipapa, Kipapi, Kitununu. For us, this means we are not going to hear his laugh again. Because Papa Ineli Motu Onagatautseya. Papa was very knowledgeable. He was a reader. He read across the board, he read science, he read science fiction, he read everything. I remember Anna, while I was at school, Haikizari homework staka, Nikalaki consulte yena bill, and then Gego encyclopedia. So Nike generation a a consultant encyclopedia, not Google. So I will first give you a na and then the answer, embellish everything in context, and then go go encyclopedia. And it fascinated me who he knew everything, like everything. And he would even help make Africans, you know, and to say, and I would say to him, Mara Papa, how come Utsiba Africans? It means we're not sell out. And he would laugh and he will tell me history here, yeah, Africans and everything. Papa was a loving father to us. He was a provider. Papa, we never went to bed hungry. And by that, I don't mean we would always have um, seven colors in everything, but we would eat before Robale. It wasn't always Munati. But he made sure we've got shelter, we've got food, we are comfortable as Banabahai. Papa, when he then had the grandchildren, he took care of his grandchildren, Urori Sang, because the Nikili Kohai. I would dash out quickly, Kedi Shopong, Kimo Sieli Papa, you know? And Hagi Hutla, Unatari, Yo, Quinizo, I need the Buya. For someone and very short, and I will find them by round at the full, you know, I'm Shushuza, Rorisang. But I hear he was like that with us as well when we were young. Mama Alice Kolong, he took care of us. So we are going to miss a lot about him. He was a disciplinarian, but he was also soft. So, una 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 sa kwateli, you know, una uta beya straight, but asa kwat. And nere kona buali ena, any and everything. That's the type of father that he was. So, one of my brothers, I'm not gonna say often, told me kore. Papa Ulare, this was in 2013, he's not going to live for up to five years. So this was 2013, so 2018 he passed on. So when you add the Psalms, five years ahead. Years Prior to him being sick, he would say to me, Quinizo, I don't have much time to live. And I would say, Mara Papa, 120, can't Mara Obatla Pila until Ningi because 120, Ingat, and he would laugh. So I'm saying this to say, death is not understood by Batuba sitting. Mutu Azibang, Kio Azamailing. People say it's a contract between Mutu O Osaka Fitting and God. People say Mutu Wati Bahatu Tamaya. But Oksalayo, he's not here. Tina would have liked for him to be here. But the end for him, if it will. Now, I'm not his maker. None of us are. If I were his maker, Nikito Rikoye na Aidula, more qualifying a little bit longer. But gay. With a hit. He 
was peaceful, Papa. And even now, when he got sick, and I would like for us, Basiti, to conduct ourselves in that way, peacefully. I'm not saying we're not going to have disagreements and all those things, but maintain peace, Papa, and Leon. My brothers, it's going to be a long road for us, but I would like for us to Kamasoho and Papa Inelimutu at Inelimutu Asibitang for Sichaba. And his legacy is going to be judged Karona because Hasaliyoyen. So if one of us is something out of order, Hutlo Tua. But we make our own decisions. So I would like to say to us, let's carry the flag high and continue to raise legacy and be united. And he's got grandchildren, take care of the grandchildren, Stahaye. And to Umama, you walked this road in Upapa before we were here. And we are here now, Upapa Ageko. But I'd like to assure you, Uguti, you are not alone. Obviously, he holds a different space in your heart. But we are here. And we knew him. We knew what he wanted. We knew what he did not want. And so we will continue and strive when are the things that will make him happy and that will make you happy. Thank you for coming and sharing this day with us. It's been a difficult, I think, two weeks, but we are here today. God has seen us through and I believe that he will continue strengthening us as a family. Thank you. Kaspe di baraga di lebo ko bagam sunkut. We'll continue with the program. We'll take the musical item and thereafter call upon Ntate Shepard Kivit, Litumi Musunkut, to also come here and share something with us. Oh, Sana, oh, Sana, oh, Dimo, oh, Sana, oh, Dimo, oh, Dimo, Puntat, Ribine. Ribine, oh, Sana, oh, Sana,
I greet you, brothers and sisters in Christ, in the wonderful and powerful name of my Savior, Jesus Christ. The third child of the late Mr. and Mrs. Kivet. I am here to represent the Kivet family to pay tribute to Ikoha Okabis. Tinage Okabisi, Ekaya Besimbiza, O Albut. Because Unongaba, Naye Ebembiza, O Albut. Tina Okabisi, Simazin Goguba, Uyehova, Wamanya, Unongaba, No Kabisi, Gogum Chado. But at a easy fungo, but at a more peace. But you with God's help, says our cleaner is fungo, says our cleaner on more peace. Wavoma, Okabi Siwati, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and be one. And what God has joined together, no man can put asunder. Matthew chapter 19, verse 5 to 6. Okabisi was a son-in-law to my mom and dad, was a brother-in-law to Abandwana Baglonunga. He was respectful. He was obedient to the Kivit family. He was loving. He was caring. Very compassionate. Soft. My father and my mom, Bibetim Kwenyan, Galolonki Kaisha. You can imagine they were the generation of those days. They would never say, Habis or Elias. He remained Umkwenya Nagubo until my mom passed on in 1988 and my dad in 1990. Siban Benenja Lono is our brother in law. As Umtana was he finally became Umtana Sekaya Uputue too in blissful events and sorrowful events, Ebenati. That He was a loving husband to Nongaba, always the next to Nongaba understanding Unungaba, the success, Ka'abuti and the success, yeah, Boboy too, they worked towards that. And they did that because they knew that they could do anything through Christ who strengthened them. That's what Paul said to the Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. Baba no sapo. But what Kobe Gokabi Singolo Tan to Gusapo Rag. He used to say to me, even Divisa Ausi, Ausi, Nahaka Hula Hamunat. Like Banaba Bang, Banali everything, Hanaba Hula. My father passed on when I was very young. But Banaba, I'm going to do the best for them holistically the total well-being. And I would say to him, Lena, I'm from that background, but can you see who I am? It's because of my mom and my father. Therefore, Lena and Nongaba will make the best out of your family. And indeed, they remained the best. And 
We thank God for a life that had wisdom on Nava. Baby and Gumzegelo or Pilayo, Baba Ning, Baba Ning, Nabo, Baba Nuanella Uchad. They used to say, Hankanyala, Lignalo Laga, Uncari, the Gatuan, Lila Nazi, Lila Abuti. And it's only God who can do that. I Tina abantu benya tuno ngaba and abantwana uthi qo uzanomeleza aniqinise kuko konke okulungileyo he shall cover you with the precious blood of the lamb and will ensure that no weapon formed against you shall prosper as you remain the righteousness of God in Christ. And his love, no love on will continue to dwell particular kaya. The love of Abud demonstrated throughout from Nasi Divana Nai as a Kivit family until he passed on. The love of Paul Adi, I am persuaded that nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Program Director. Eskibulechi Khajideshu, Kaspediseshu, Baragadile Bukhwe. Can I continue to take to me Musungudu? Okay, can I just take a musical item and thereafter I'll call Dr. Rajohana Matsidiso just to deliver a tribute on behalf of Menon Abam Sungudu Maro. A tribute to my loving husband, Habisi Musungudu. My love, Habisi, now that you are gone, my love for you occupies the total eclipse of my heart, and I guess you'll stay there for the rest of my life. Perhaps it is too early to refer our love, joy, passion in the past tense. 
including literally everything we shared. You have been dependable soulmate, a source of my comfort and happiness, but above everything else, you have been a caring father, a nurturing grandfather, compassionate uncle, a dear brother, a robust revolutionary who occupied frontline trenches to lead by example. But to me, you were just a simple and loving husband. A man I instantly fell in love with on the very first occasion I laid my eyes on when we first met in 1970. You have been a confidant and best friend I've ever had and with whom I shared my sadness, disappointments, and my hurt. Yes, you are one person who lifted me up when I went through rough patches and setbacks in my life, and you had this amazing ability to show me a silver lining in the darkest clouds. You could point out at my positive strides, at my success, my achievements, and restore my sense of optimism. You'll always found a way to bring out twinkle eyes that communicated the depth of my soul and feelings for you. Here I am today, without your sensual touch of assurance. My heart is broken into scattered pieces spread all over. My hubs, I'm sitting alone in the darkness of despair, and you are laying in front of me in a casket so close, yet so far for me that I cannot reach your soul. But all I can do is just only to shower you with tears of sorrow and pain, just a mere mention of your name or sight of your picture. My love every day since 24th of December, 2018, I woke up every morning and reached over for you, but you are not there. A reality dawns to me that I've lost you forever, while the heavens have gained and thought alone exacerbate my pain, which has become harder to bear. Nevermore will I ever see your trademark smile, feeling your strong and firm embrace. As you leave me alone, my love, my basket of burdens is filled with grief of my and that of our family loss. At this moment, the burden is so heavy to carry, albeit I must still cross this path and find a will to carry your wishes to the logical conclusion. Ordinarily, you are a born activist, an uncompromising freedom fighter, a most revered revolutionary to the end of this time, but yet variegating. It is therefore for this character you made me to understand and be married not only to you, but into liberation struggle and crowded lifetime because this is who you are. At some point, the state of your movement and your attended falling state of health would frustrate you so much. This was so because you would have wanted to be in the thick of things, agitate for both action and change, but you could not, and you increasingly felt lonely, helpless, and isolated. My love, you kept on telling me that you did not join the struggle, but you responded to a clarion call and injunction of time. You kept on telling me that your movement owes no one anything, but all of us owe us movements a great deal of debt. It is a weapon in hands of our people to liberate themselves from all sorts of oppression and exploitation. In turn, it must be used as an instrument to achieve socio-economic transformation, not greed and self-interest. You always implored that we must build protected and keep it united. My love, your veracity and your profound commitment to social justice, freedom and democracy were your most singular driving force and constant motivation. I've seen you in your happiest moments in your life, 
but I did not. I did it to see you agonizing in deep thoughts and at times in pain, but you were unshaken, not only in your beliefs, but you stood also firm on your beliefs and very resolute. Dearest Habisi, you often told me that you needed no special favors, no special treatment from anyone. You never lost any hope, even when dark clouds gathered and conspired against not only your wishes, but also wishes of greater to, uh, deed. You would say that a system that works must work for all without prejudice. And we must instruct our own movement to work towards achieving the speed. Perhaps fate and God has designated and arranged that we meet, fall in love, and get married with hindsight that in the latter years of your life, after taking care of the noble cause of struggle and setting agenda for transformation, you would need a 24 hours care and support since you are a mortal being. I consider myself very lucky that fate and God favored me with this opportunity to love, nurse, cared for you until the end without abandoning any hope. I did my best under the circumstances, and you know that, my hearts. If I was to be given another chance to love and to look after you as I did, I will certainly do it without any hesitation because caring for you was my only quality moment of solitude and of a process of healing in a way. I, together with our family and friends, did what was humanly possible and known by health sciences professions. But it was clear that your time was up and God had to take over in line with his promise that he will come to fetch us one by one. My harps, Jangomfazi, I would like to thank God for both a gracious life we shared together and for the rare opportunity to look after you, my love, when some of your contemporaries and other freedom fighters have disappeared from the surface of the earth. With them, there is no trace, no grave, with this fate could have easily fallen upon you too. Others died even getting an opportunity to be cared by the loved ones. But my own God spared us from such tragedy and you were given extra time to fulfill your generational mission, freedom in our lifetime. My hearts, you fought a good battle and you were fortunate that your deteriorating and recoveries in your ill health somehow were at times giving us hope but also silently gave us a warning. But as you passing, but as your passing on came by, it was a sudden horror, the wrench of being torn apart, which only just served as a reminder that nothing is permanent in life, and not even you, my dear love, to whom my everything revolved around. My love, today, with your passing on, I've learned that it is as precious, but it is indeed fragile. All of us are dancing on the edge of a precipice and on a dizzy cliff. On high, I cannot see the bottom. It is said that time has healing properties, and thus my sorrow, grief, pain shall pass. I know this could be true, but it this lonely in between time that I start missing you, my hearts. I'll always cherish my moment in the life of God has borrowed us while it lasted. I know you are completely healed in a good care now wherever you are, and it was from the beginning meant to end this way. I think of you with love every day, my husband, but that is nothing new as I thought about you yesterday and days before that too. I think of you in silence and I often speak your name and all I hear is memories of your picture in a frame. My hubby, your memory 
is my keepsake, with which I will never part with for anything offered. And I know God has you in his keeping, and I'll always have you in my heart. Be assured that the sand of time will never wash away my love that I have for you, and your sweet memories will remain forever etched in my heart. I will miss your deepest love, your special charm, your bursting laughter that filled our home. I will miss your robustness when things are serious, your reasonable smile when you are at your naughtiest, and most importantly, I will miss the depth of your advices and free-flowing wisdom. You gave us four wonderful sons and a beautiful daughter, a great gift God blessed us with in our convent, and to whom I'm sure my solace will come from. They will always be a constant reminder of a magic life we had, my love. Thank you very much for the great foundation you have laid, the preparatory work you have done, and a very difficult part you have accomplished on them. I will hold tight from where you left off, and as you gaze down from heaven, you will smile and be proud of my efforts, our collective effort, when their respective lives turn around for the best. They will not disappoint, and your extended family and us in the liberation movement. Good night, my love. Robalaka Khoso Moratu. We'll now move on and uh, invite the leadership of Santago, represented here by their Secretary General, Antate Ralph Jones. And immediately after that, we'll then enter the political side of it, and I'll want comrades to be ready with revolutionary songs so that we can bid farewell to Comrade Hubs. Can I get the leadership of Santago? to join us quickly. As I said, we will move to the political program and take Comrade Amos Masondo. And on behalf of Comrade Paul Mashatile, we will take Comrade Monte Ngungubele. And then we will take the leadership of the church before we hand over to the leadership of the police who will be the one that will invite our Honorable Premier to deliver his eulogy because this is the official provincial funeral. So we have to take it during that session. So let me start by handing over to the leadership of uh, the taxi that will well understand when I said Nachi Sampam. Uh, thank you, Program Director. A very good morning to the congregation. A very good morning to the number one citizen, together with your lieutenants. Let me greet the ANC as a whole. Nani Bumama Bogoto. And of course, the youth all different structures that are here. My name is Ralph Jones. I'm the Secretary General of Santaco Haute. And let me refer you in that day, Yusufi, as a problem director, because I saw we're not on the program, but that had to be rectified. So that's part of the problem. But thank you very much for the opportunity. And let me begin with the end in mind. You know, in his book, Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of High Defective People, said, seek first to understand, then to be understood. 
You seek first to understand them to be understood. And don't listen with the intention to reply, but listen with the intention to understand. Now, here is a man when everybody was afraid of the taxi industry, he came into our lives and he made a difference. When Santaco was formed in 2001, he was part and parcel of the founding statement of Santaco. That is when all the mother bodies were brought together to stop the infighting among the industry. And that's how Santaco was formed, and hence it's still in existence. It's because of the efforts of CAPS. It's because of the efforts of Ntate Musungkut. He was not alone. He had his own squad, the likes of George Tienefeld, the likes of Mpoma Shinini, the likes of Terence Swaila, and the others. They brought the taxi industry to extend that violence had to stop. But then what perturbed us was when he was removed as an MEC, all hell broke loose. Then things started to change. And we could not understand why was he taken away. Hitherto, or heretofore, we still don't have an answer to say why when a great man of his element adds value to an industry that everybody is afraid of, that he gets removed. So something is not right with the leadership, or something is not right with government. And we fail because of there's no consultation as well. Now, the taxi industry is daily mourning in the Temusungkut. I regard the way he was called, and he's still there, Chaps, Chesampam, Enfuetu. He was brave enough to tell people. You know, that's one thing with the industry that we are in. We come from the industry where men will say, Yabanam Fanam. But let them sing. We come from such industry. But of importance is we are still saying to the ruling party. Here we are as a taxi industry. The legacy of Ntate Musungkutu should not go down in vain. The legacy of Ntate Musungkutu, that he brought the industry together, should not be departed by individuals in, from the structure or from government departments. And that's where we go wrong. Individuals are the people that makes the, mov the movement lose power because people come here for wrong reasons and we are saying in the industry we do not want to go the route that some people are going forming new political parties when at the end of the day we are loyal to you it is people like that that brought us closer to the movement but there are people in the movement that are pushing us away and the question of the day is, what have you done for us? We are talking the era of apartheid, where we are crying about a subsidy. We are not subsidized. The 2025 agenda, page 16, is a small piece of a paragraph talking about the taxi industry. We are nowhere there. What are you doing for us? Taking people of Ntate Musungkutu's element away from us and giving us people that will coincide with the Van der Merves and the Van Tonders, 
where our value chain should be with us. You need to rethink as we approach twenty nineteen is the elections. And we don't have to be shy about that. There are some elements in the tax industry that want to form a party because we are not represented anyway. And we are saying, let's talk. We are saying the legacy of Musungkutu should not die in vain. Where now we're going to see negative things. We are not that kind of people. But if you don't apply your mind, some of these things will happen. To the family of Musungkutu, our hearts are, are they in that, cup, in that casket with him. Your loss is our loss. The taxi industry, we feel it. Even today, we're still talking about if Musungkutu nalite. The taxi violence that is taking place now, if Musungkutu nalite, it would have been gazetted or let's close this road. It would have been gazetted or let's close this rank. And even individuals that are giving problems, adding problems to the industry, wouldn't have been coming back into the industry. So we are saying to the number one, you gave us MECs, only two of them followed your instruction, the rest ran away from them. Revisit that. We are saying to the government of the day, Consult us when you bring in leadership or heads of departments. On transport matters, let us talk, be it national or be it provincial. But we need to be united. Our doors are open. Have your doors open as well for us. We are saying to the family, we will always be there for you. Unfortunately, the president couldn't make it this morning. He phoned me and said he's not feeling well, but he would have loved to carry this message over to you. When I say the president, I mean President Divos. I'm not talking of Matoma, in other words, I'll be fired. No, but I'm talking of President Divos, the Santaco president. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it, but his message is clear that Early January, we need to consult with one another. Early January, we need to talk and let us strengthen the relationship. Moving forward, we say, Amanza! Amanza! Don't undermine people who are on the ground. I thank you. Can I call upon comrades, if possible, if there is someone that can start a revolutionary song, one or two very hot ones, will then, will then welcome Comrade Masondo, and will be immediately followed by Comrade Monling Gungubel, who will be representing our TG. And I will then call upon people that have been selected to be Paul bearers to come so that you can remove the flag of the African National Congress and hand it over to the Provincial Secretary, Comrade Park Stau, who will then hand it over to the family. Immediately after that, I will then hand over uh, to the police and the police will take the second part or the third part of the program. Show comrade Ungai Galaba.
Avanza! Avanza! Long live the undying spirit of Comrade Hubs. Long live! Long live the undying spirit of Comrade Henry Kuala. Long live! Avanza! I'll spin the cabane so that Comrade uh, Amos Masonduka. Amanza, Amanza, Masi coordinating Gatle Macaba, Nkeluinig is Abu Mama, Abu Mama, Snigazening or Abu Mama. Mata Amanda Amanda Mata Mata Matimba Matimba All power All power all power, all power. Program director, the premier, premier of our province, Honorable David Makura, and the first lady of our province, the Musonkutu family, and all the extended family members who are here, the bishop and pastors and all leaders of faith-based organizations, neighbors, MECs, MPLs, counselors, comrades and friends. Program Director, 
we meet to mourn and celebrate the life of Comrade Kaps Musungut. To the family, we say, your loss is our loss. Your pain is our pain. Your tears are our tears. To you, we say, life is a struggle. Like the poet of old, we say, keep on keeping on like a sinking star beyond the at utmost bounds of the earth. Sitige yebo ziohamba the she's doom business in seas where Africa what was your sala is born. Most of us gathered here this morning would agree that Comrade Caps in his own right over time became a leader and an activist of note. His positive influence was felt both in the broader Soweto community and indeed beyond. Program director, when one speaks of Kabisi's memory, one gets reminded of a debate in a Catholic institution in the southern part of Johannesburg in the year 1981. Gathered here were a number of Congress activists who in the main sought to answer the question, what is to be done to transcend the politics of learners, the politics of students, and the politics of youth? beyond youth struggles to the building of community-based struggles. The focus being to mobilize the elderly and residents into the mainstream of our struggle. These activists came from amongst others, Soweto, Lenazia, El Roro Park, and similar areas. The discussion was not ethnic or narrow geographic specific. It may have been skewed, as I recall, towards Soweto, given the potential of Soweto to influence and impact positively on other areas. As the saying goes, when Soweto coughs, the country may catch the flu. So I was not surprised when the meet meeting recommended, amongst others, that it, be, it would be a good idea to reinforce an already exi existing Soweto Civic Associ Association rather than to establish an alternative rival organization. The Soweto Civic Association interbranch had to be strengthened. The Soweto Committee of 10 had to be given the necessary support that the Soweto blueprint, a document of the Committee of Ten, had to be given a revolutionary slant and content if our struggle for national democratic revolution was to succeed. The civics were understood not to be political parties. They sought to address bread and butter issues, the lack of basic facilities and infrastructure, roads, electricity, parks, etc. In the period between 1980 and 1990, the Civic Association, Association slant towards Congress became fairly clear. The extent and success of various community struggles in the 1980s bears testimony to this fact. I saw and experienced Habisi, Habisi's progressive act activism in these struggles. I first met 
Comrade Caps, in a company of about, of about four people, it, in, in, in Chip Street, in the Johannesburg CBD. The person I knew very well amongst them in this group was Comrade Vusi Kumalo, then General Secretary of Portua. He had been my senior at Skalontuana High School, also way to. The group was looking for a union office space. I referred them, having had a brief discussion with them, to the then president of the General and Allied Workers Union, Gao, Comrade Samson Do. Gao offered them an office space. The rest, as we know, is history. As historians have currently captured, Ottawa became part of revolutionary trade unionism in South Africa. They were able to link factory floor struggles to community struggles. Program director, the fact is that the civic associations, associations were in the main initiated and established by ANC-aligned activists. In this regard, the influence of the Freedom Charter cannot be underestimated. Going back to the masses, to learn from the collective experience became a critical requirement. What Comrade Hubs and his compatriots sought to do, as the ALC taught, was the improvement of the quality of life of the people in general and the poorest of the poor in particular. The masses, it was understood, were their own liberators. Only them were capable of writing and determining their own history. Comrade Hubs understood that if one was to study the genesis of civics, one would have to trace this to, amongst others, the coming into being of mine compounds, the squatter settlements, the, the, the townships old and new, the rural villages old and new, including those settlements under missionary uh, stations or traditional leadership. Overall, the Soweto experience, the Soweto lived experience, should be read and understood with those of similar settlements elsewhere. In the 1890s, the establishment of Cape Town. In 1912, the establishment of Alexander Township. 1900s, African and Color settlement in Dorinfontein, Malay Camp, and elsewhere. 1925, they're coming into being of, of Pinville. In 1932, Orlando East came into existence, as we know, and what followed were, fol followed were shack dwellers' struggles, led, amongst others, by Sofa Sonke, James Mpanza. Activists of the Communist Party, including Ndate and an iconic leader, Walter Sisul. Comrade Hubs understood that the liberation movement Liberation Movement, led by the ANC, sought to create a national democratic society. Today's context, more than ever before, speaks to the recognition of the limitation of political freedom, important though this may be to the future of South Africa. The need for radical social economic transformation continues to challenge all of South Africa and all of his people. So we worked with Comrade Caps. We worked with him in various capacities at various levels. We worked with him in community, in community and civic struggles. We worked with him in government. Indeed, we worked with him in certain programs, including, amongst others, the BRT. Comrade Caps departs and leaves us at a time when we are grappling with the questions that 
stubbornly continue to linger on. What is the nature of the civic movement today or in the current period? What needs to be done to defend the gains of the National Democratic Revolution? What needs to be done to advance the NDR to a higher level? What might be the, the, the form and the content of this as understood by civic associations in general? What positions or what position should the progressive organizations adopt on the question of corruption and related practices? Comrade Caps was very clear on this point. He knew that we had to do, we had an obligation to do everything for the revolution and nothing against the revolution. Because revolutionaries, comrades, are by definition eternally optimistic, we all have a responsibility currently to build a South Africa that Moses Kotane, Oliver Tambo, Josh Lovio, Lillian Goy, and many others envisioned. Let us continue to be inspired by all the good work that Comrade Hubs did. Forward ever, backward never, victory certain. Amanda! Amanda! Mata! Mata! Matimba! Matimba! All power! All power! Thank you very much. Oliver Tambo, Salaba Fadas, Amanda, Amanda, Ilanga, Ilanga, Lichon, Eva Sevensi, Emas Manyan. Ilanga, Ilanga, Lichon, Eva Sevensi, Eva Smanya, Eguta, Esi Sevensi, Lama, Eva Sevensi, Eva Smanya, Eguta, Yes, seven, Zelamap, Eva seven, Eva Smanya, Ilanga, Ilanga, Licho, Eva seven, Eva Smanya, Ilanga, Ilanga, Licho. Eva seven Manta Long live the spirit of Comrade Hubs, long live. Uh, Comrade Program Director. Today I am directed to speak on behalf of the National African Co National Executive Committee of the ANC through the words of the Treasurer General of the ANC. But before I do that, allow me a second to say today we are bearing an intellectual par excellence. 
a man who permanently interrogated life. He never rested without inquiring and trying to explain various questions of life as they continue to play themselves out. Two things about perhaps that I want to remember. We were in the legislature. He was saying, worried about the unit of the country and that of the organization. I'm saying this because funeral of heroes like this needs to be posal points to reflect on the cause for which they lived and died and check indeed if we can look at ourselves and say that cause for which he lived and died is actually in progress. Perhaps he used to say, he used to scare me by the way, he used to say, Utatu Mandela to him looks like a pathogen. You see, if somebody has got a fracture and you inject him with pethidin for some time, it appears that a fracture is gone. But when it disappears from the system, the fracture comes again. Now he was saying, we look united under his leadership. For how long are we going to continue as a country? Now the biggest question we need to interrogate is the character of that cohesion at this point in time, because that is what he lived and died for. Perhaps believed in unity, and his consent to anything had to be earned through arguments. Now, as directed by the NEC, through the words of the Treasurer General of the ANC, Program Director Family of Comrade Khabis Musungutu, Chairperson of the ANC in Gauteng and Premier of our province, Comrade David Makura, NEC members who are here, Provincial Executive Leadership, Regional Executive present here, members of Parliament, members of Provincial Legislature, Honorable Councillors and Mayors, members of the Diplomatic Corps present here, veterans and stalwarts of our liberation struggle here present, comrades and friends. On behalf of the leadership and membership of the ANC and myself, allow me to express our heartfelt condolences to the Msungutu family for their devastating loss. We say to Mama Nongaba and the children, Re Re, Le Fu, Kingwitz Yalapa, Lingwe, Lilingwe. Your loss is our loss, your pain is our pain. Hence, we have been with you since we heard the news of the untimely death of one of us, and we are here today to be at your side with the hope that our presence will somehow alleviate the pain you are experiencing. It is also our hope that you will find solace in the knowledge that God never leaves nor forsake his children. He is the comforter, trust in him, and you'll find the true comfort and healing. 68 years ago, a gentle giant was born from a humble beginning, growing on the dusty streets of Free State, and then Soweto, a young lad, growing stature to become one of the political giants of our time. Driven by his dream of a better life for all his people, Comrade Hubs, as he was affectionately known, overcame adversity in pursuance of a vision. A comrade of exceptional vision, Comrade Hubs, you had a dream to liberate your people. You had a dream to free your country from the shackles of apartheid colonialism. You had a dream of ending oppression of men by another man. And you had a dream to break the chains of imperialist 
exploitation of men by another man. Hence, you were unflinching in your determination to rid our country of racial oppression and class exploitation. Your love for your people and country was undying. Your commitment to serve was beyond ordinary. You have left a rich legacy of selfless service and dedication to the cause, and for that, we are eternally grateful to you. Comrades and compatriots, the ANC and our country are reeling in pain as Comrade Krabs was a rare breed. He was an embodiment of what is referred to as a versatile activist and a politician. Whether it was about community issues of unaffordable rents and undemocratic Bantu councils, Comrade Krabs, you were there in the forefront fighting alongside the community through the Soweto Civic Association, the predecessor of Sanko. Whether it was expensive bus fares, Comrade Krabs, the black community, commuters generally and workers in particular could count on your leadership. Even when students protested against inferior education, you were also there actively supporting the struggle for people's education. Comrade Krabs, you also led from the front on the shop floor when workers fought against bad working conditions and for the recognition of their unions. The formation of the Post and Telecommunication Workers Union, usually used to be referred to as Portwa, the predecessor of CWU and COSATU, amongst others, a number of progressive trade unions bear living testimony to your commitment to worker rights. Since you understood that worker struggles were not just about better working conditions, you became an internationalist that got involved in struggles of other exploited workers and downtrodden people across the world in pursuance of not only liberation but also socialism and Marxism as a permanent solution to the exploitation of those who do not own the means of production. It is no exaggeration that Comrade Krabs, you served for decades, the workers with distinction and the history of trade union movement in our country cannot be written without your name being prominent. Comrade Krabs, you were a revolutionary and a committed cadre of our movement and your passing has left a void that will prove difficult to fill. Hence the news of your passing has been devastating to all of us as it came at the time when we were relying on comrades of your caliber to contribute to efforts to rebuild and renew our movement whilst putting our country back on its feet. Comrade Krabs, we are saddened by your sudden passing as we count you as one of the most committed cadre of our movement and selfless servant of our people. You were a servant of our people to the end, inspired by the love for education and the deep understanding that education can assist in breaking the cycle of poverty and underdevelopment. You supported the gallant struggles of students against the abhorrent apartheid education system and for free quality and compulsory education. How unfortunate that your personal circumstances of losing your father at a tender age and the inhuman apartheid system denied you an opportunity to pursue your dream to be properly educated. Those circumstances notwithstanding, Comrade Krabs, you grew and developed to become one of the outstanding organic intellectuals ever produced by our movement. One blessed, with an incisive mind, you articulated the theory and policies of our movement with ease. With aplomb, you would engage in intellectual debates
people and the humiliation and degradation that our people were subjected to by the apartheid regime inspired him to dream. It is therefore not surprising that Comrade Kapps made the difficult choice of joining the struggle at a tender age. The apartheid security forces were brutal and many of our comrades were killed and maimed by the racist killing machine. Brutality, detentions, I beg your pardon. Instead, the apartheid scrutiny for the, the apartheid security forces were brutal, were, were brutal, and many of our comrades were killed and maimed by the racist killing machine. Brutality, detentions, harassment, and humiliations, notwithstanding, you chose to fight against apartheid colonialism rather than surrender. You were brave, and your commitment to the cause of liberation, justice, and peace was impeccable. sad news of your passing as you were a pillar of strength and well from where the agency and even the country could draw wisdom and inspiration from. The ANC and indeed the people of our country are mourning. We have lost a brother, a comrade and a warrior. We have lost a soldier, a servant and a revolutionary. Albeit being humble, Comrade Cubs, you were a warrior and a combatant for democracy non-racialism, non-sexism, equality and freedom for all our people. Death, be not proud, even when you have robbed us of a husband, a father, a brother, an uncle, and a comrade. We will not surrender. Instead, we will rededicate ourselves to the vision that drove comic cups. The values of humility, selflessness, moral uprightness, and service to our people. Instead of crying, instead of crying, we find commitment to the cause and humility that he has left in his honor. Let us emulate his example and continue to strive for the ideals that he stood for. These are the ideals of democracy, non-racialism, non-sexism, equality and freedom for our people. As we pay tribute to this veteran for our struggle, we need to remind ourselves of the task ahead. As the movement, we need to intensify our efforts to rebuild and renew the ANC, the organization that Comrade Hubs dedicated his life to. As the country, we need to rebuild our economy so as we are in the position to push back the frontiers of poverty, unemployment, and inequality. As this will be befitting tribute that we can pay to Comrade Cubs for his selfless service to our people. Comrades, our people's lives need to change. We need, as the ANC, to lead, intensify current efforts to radically transform the economy of our country so as our people can indeed experience a better life. As we intensify efforts to rebuild the economy and redistribute, land and even apply restitution phenomenon around land to our people. We must do so in the memory of comrades like Habs. The Msunguti family has lost a son, a brother, a father, and an uncle. We have lost a brother and a comrade. The ANC has lost a dedicated and formidable cadre, and our country has lost one of its best and selfless sons. We need not despair, but have to pick the spear. We have to redouble our efforts to render quality services to our people, build an inclusive economy, and promote social cohesion. As the ANC, we dip our revolutionary banner in honor of Comrade Hubs and express our heartfelt condolences to the Msungutu family. Thank you for sharing your gallant son with us. Comrade Cubs will always be in our hearts. He will always be an inspiration to create a better life for all our people. We thank you and God bless.
Thanks, Comrade Monday Kaspedi Waragadi Lebohui. Comrades, I'll call upon the platoon now to come over. You will remove the flag, hand it over to our provincial treasury, Comrade Park Stow, who will take it and give it to the family. And thereafter, I will ask our Archbishop elect Potuan to come forward for the sermon. And immediately after that, we'll hand over to the SAPS chaplain, who will then program direct the official component of this funeral. It's all over to you, comrades. I shall go, my hamburger, I shall come to my seat. Amanza, Amanza, long live the undying spirit of Comrade Khaps Msungkutu, long live. Thanks, comrades. I will now formally hand over to our Archbishop-elect, but on behalf of both the African National Congress and the Houghton Provincial Government, we say go well. Comrade Hubs, there is no grave big enough to carry you the giant of our revolution. Rest in peace and ensure that you protect us both as the movement and as government as we enter this important mile of going to the 2019 elections to further liberate our people. Archbishop. When peace, like a river, attendeth my way. When sorrows, like sea, billows roll. Whatever, my Lord, Thou hast told me to say, hey, that it is well. Like a river, it attended 
my way Where hands are Like sea billows roll Whatever my Lord Thou hast taught me To say that it is well It is well with my soul it is well with my soul. You may be seated, saints, in the presence of the Lord. Thank you very much, choir. To the program director, Baba Aul Sufi, our honorable premier, Tate uh, Makura, I would like to say greetings to all the political and provincial leadership of the African National Congress. I would like to salute the chaplaincy in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'd also like to salute SAPS and all of the different uh, categories they form. Mkondo, Wesizwe, the Women's League, the Youth League, Naonga Matagane, we ANC, Yabata Negayo, Ndate Makura, Ingati Koni, Ndwe Shodayo. We have a Women's League, we have Mkondo, and we have a Youth League but we don't have a men's league. In your career, politicians were too. I guess not to say long as a leon da one. If women have their own league where they are taught about womanhood, it goes without saying that we need to have a league that concentrates on men and teach them what manhood is all about. Uh, that is very important. I want to salute all the church leadership, archbishops, bishops, pastors, elders, and deacons. I also want to salute the family Agwam Sungoto, Neyagwa Kiviti, and also want to say a word to the children baga tata umsungu to kuti bandabam 
you have had a giant in your father and he has established a legacy it will be to your benefit and to the benefit of this nation if you will honor the legacy and hold in high esteem the same name you did not come into the world with that same name you were given it by your father and therefore whatever you do remember that you are the seed of msunkutu and you should always act responsibly. In Lela, Ubaba, Umasondo, Abing and Leleng Ayo, Zwile Landelisa Yoki Protocol, Naming it Baba, Kila Kaleo. Amen. I do not have much time here, but Andegayo. My task, it is to bring to you the word of the living God, which will be found in the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament, chapter 18, verse 4. Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 4. In this translation that I'm reading from, it says, Behold, all souls are mine the soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine the soul that sins shall die this is not a presupposition that people who die die because they have sinned the way we view death is different from the way God looks at death. And the simplest definition that I can give to you about the word death, death simply means separation. When your soul exits the body, your soul is separated from the body, then we say you are dead. But there is a much more serious thing than that. And that is when your soul is separated from God Almighty, its creator. Our human separation is temporary. But if we live a life until we die, having made no connection or relationship with God, that to God is a more serious type of death. The Bible calls it the second death. This is the first death. And the first death can be avoided not to enter into the second death. The text that I have read Unlike some texts in the Bible that are theologically complicated and they would require some hermeneutical interpretation. And by the way, hermeneutics is the art and science of interpreting scripture. And then we have the sister terminology which is called homiletics. Homiletics is the art and science of preaching. But hermeneutics, it is the art and science of articulating the word of God within its proper context. The verse that we have read is simple in that if I had read it in Corsa, I would have no need to preach or interpret because I would simply say, Is it Corsa as it We have a number of translations when it comes to the Bible and I would like to read the same verse to you in two or three different translations. And the purpose is so that you can get a clearer understanding of what that verse says. 
The New Living Translation reads as follows in the same verse of Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4. It says, Indeed, all lives are mine. The life of the Father as well as the life of the Son is mine. The NIV reads as follows. For everyone belongs to me, the parent as well as the child. Both alike belongs to me. The last one, which is a more recent translation called the Message Bible, it reads as follows. Every soul, man, woman, child, all belong to me. Now this is not some suggestion coming from an angel or an Episcopal Synod by some bishop somewhere in the corner of the world and writing to the church. This is a statement of declaration. It is a statement of truth. It is a statement of revelation from the Almighty God, the only person who really knows the details of our creation. We may subject our lives to a lot of things in this world, but those many things that we subject ourselves to, sometimes voluntarily, sometimes by force, they are not our creators. The only person who knows about our souls, the real you, not this body, not the house that we live in, it is God. And he comes out to the nation of Israel and he says, all souls are mine. Whether it is the soul of the father or the soul of the son, it belongs to me. Which leads me to say, ladies and gentlemen, the soul of a human being is the prerogative of God. There is no surgeon in medicine that can deal with the soul of a human being. It is only God because the soul of a human being was not created. The word create in the book of Genesis is from the word bara, B-A-R-A, -A, and it's got nothing to do with the abbreviation of Baraguanath Hospital. But the word bara simply means to bring about something out of nothing. And so the Bible says that God formed Adam out of the dust of the soil. And I'm happy to announce to you without being controversial, these are some things that archaeology is discovering today. That Africa is the cradle of the human race. All people started here in Africa. Not in America, not in Europe, not in Germany, not anywhere else. And so this I can conclude comfortably by saying, if the Bible says that God formed man from the dust of the soil, it means that God took the dust from the continent of Africa and formed Adam, the first human being. Now that does not mean there were no beings before Adam. There were other things that God created before Adam. Because our world is not 6,000 years old. The planet is not 6,000 years old. The planet is millions and millions, if not billions of years old. That is why today we have scientists who are discovering fossils and skeletons that are a million old. They are discovering dinosaurs. And they will tell you this dinosaur uh, is, is about 2 million years old. And yet human history from Adam to where we are today is just more or less 6,000 years old. So if God created the body of Adam from the soil of the continent of Africa, Africa has been known as the dark continent, primarily because of the complexion of the African person. But it is exciting to me just to know that all human beings are products of the dust 
of the continent of Africa. Now, God says, after forming Adam, he breathed into him. He did not create some scientific invention and put it into the body of Adam. God took part of himself, who he is as God, and he breathed into that dead body. And the Bible says when God did that, Adam became a living soul. So what makes us alive is the breath of God. And we did not buy it. We were given it by God. And that's why he has got the gullibility to say, all souls belong to me. Because he gave the soul to men. Now, animals have got souls, but there's a big difference between the soul of an animal and the soul of a human being. The soul of an animal is only there to give it life, but the soul of a human being is of a higher grade because God gave man not just life, but God instilled in man his own image. That's why the Bible says we are created in the image and the likeness of God. We still have the image of God, but what we have lost is the likeness of God. And God says all souls are mine. Every one of us. Every one of us. We have something inside of us that does not belong to our families. It does not belong to the government. It does not belong to business. It does not belong to medicine. It belongs to God. And that is your soul. And God says the soul of a human being belongs to him. Unfortunately, sometimes parents think they own their children, but you don't own their souls. Sometimes slave masters and slave drivers, they think they own their slaves, but they don't own their souls. Sometimes husbands think they own their wives. Maybe that's the mentality that drives husbands to kill their wives when they are at loggerheads and they not see eye to eye. And they think that this thing is lobolile, it's limalyami, pilangi malyami, so manje, so yang kwatisa, sega tandanana banyabantu, therefore I've got to kill them. I want you to know there is no human being that can own or possess the soul of another human being. Whether it's a rich man or a poor man, an educated man or an uneducated man, a civilized man or an uncivilized man, black man or a white man, there is only one person who claims ownership of our soul, and that is God Almighty himself. He's the only one. In Psalm 42, verse 2, the Bible says, My soul thirsts for God. That soul inside of you, just like you nourish your body, take care of your body, and look after your body, your soul needs nourishment. And the only food that your soul can be satisfied with is food from God himself who created you in his image. That's why the Lord Jesus said, to the devil when he was tempting him after 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So I'm here to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, it's okay for you to feed yourselves body-wise. It's okay for you to feed yourselves academically intellectually but don't forget that man is not just mind and matter to be destroyed and finished in the end of it 
Man is a spirit. Just like God is a spirit. Man is actually invisible. We are talking of the late Mr. Msunkutu today. This is his body. We refer to this as Usitumbusake. Where is he? Umadesu Usitumbusake. This is just the house. The, the real person is inside. He resides inside. Have you noticed the good tea? Uh, when people walk into some of the buildings, they walk in, walking in a straight way, and then they celebrate and enjoy themselves in those buildings. I don't want to call them by name. But when they are done with that celebration, they come out and they wander a little bit to the east and then quickly swerve to the west and then take one step down south and quickly go forward to the north. And by that time, they are not singing Amateka Yashisa. They are not singing any other thing. When they are in that state, some of them begin to say, Sejila Kampon Setsetsila. East and West and South and then North uh, and I am thirsty for God. This is what the psalmist says in Psalm 42. My soul thirsts for God. My goodness, I, 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 here I have to rush up here. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 8 verse 36 this is the Lord Jesus speaking he says what shall it profit a man if he can gain the whole world and become the richest man and yet he loses his own soul what is it that you can give in exchange to the value of your soul nothing because your soul is priceless. You can't buy God. There is no amount of silver and gold that can buy God. Now, sing, sing, ya ngasema petelwe. The Bible says, all souls are mine. But it is the soul that sinneth that shall die. And then we have this concept, Yoguti. Oh my God, so many gallons of liquor, so many cigarettes, so many women, so many immoralities, so many corruptions. These things make me a sinner before God. No. Sin is not what you do. Sin is what you are that causes you to do what you do. Sin is spiritual. All of these evil things that we do, they are the evidence that we are sinners by nature. They don't make us sinners. We don't qualify to become sinners. It's not the wrong things we do that make us sinners. But we do those things because by nature we are sinners. Now before I go to my conclusion, I just want to break down to you the word sin. Sin. The Bible says in John 1, 29. John chapter 1 verse 29. John speaks to the crowds and he says, 
he points at Jesus. He says, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. The Bible uses the singular, the sin of the world. Jesus is not the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. No, Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Now I'm going to give you the most simple definition that I was given at Bible college. What is sin? Sin is not necessarily telling a lie. We were told at Bible school that sin is missing the mark. Sin is missing the mark. And I'm going to show you an illustration. When you miss the mark, it means you are aiming at something. And then when you shoot, you miss your target. You have missed the mark. Now, for one moment, if I want to shoot at one of those things, please look at the altar. Look that side. If I want to shoot that thing, I am aiming right at it. I cannot miss because this is a laser pointer. But if I want to shoot that thing and then I point next to it, on top or on the side, on the other side or on the bottom, if I release the bullet, I will not hit that thing. Am I right? Now, if we say sin is missing the mark, it means the intention of God is that we must be connected to him in order to be like him. He is our mark. We must have a relationship with him. So if we move away from God, then we are missing the mark. And that is what sin is. Sin is missing the connection between yourself and God. Those of you who are older, you will remember Oguti, before Gufiga ma pasi, kwa guna lento kutuwa yitrem, i pasi le nkule hamba esporuen, and then even a pole, a bamba is in tambozo case. No matter how new that bus would be, once that pole is disconnected from the electrical powers, that whole beautiful new bus comes to a standstill. And that's what happens to our lives when we miss the connection with God then our lives become ungodly. The conclusion. There comes a time, all of us know, anything yomtu, agnigayon, there comes a time when they want it back. Unkulunkulu, has required the soul of that man to come back. And all of us, we are going to get to that stage where God says, you've done what you have done, M. Shabin. Now I want my soul to come back. My question is, when that time comes, because let's make an example the president of south africa borrows you his car for some reason he borrows it to you First thing, you will be so scared even to go into that car and drive it. Just thinking that le moto ayo yam eka president. And finally, when you get the guards to go in and drive it, you will make sure you obey all the traffic rules. You will not speed, you will not overtake in barrier lines. You will not do anything. President. 
You might even get to the extreme. You want to make sure you are not going to be able to do it. You want to make sure you are not going to be able to do it. You want to make sure you are not going to be able to do it. You want to make sure on your right there is no car, on your left there is no car. But you don't want anything to happen to the car of the president. My city is going to be able to do it. Ungulomtu olitreleko. Umtu olitlapa unga kwa siku spata. You eat in the president's car. You don't take it to car wash. You don't take it to service. And this beautiful car from the president becomes like a hobo's car. And whilst you are driving it, you get a call. So and so, can I please have my car back? And it's in that ugly condition. Do you think the president will be happy? Please talk to me. Will the president be happy? What makes us think that when we go back to the creator with our souls unwashed, uncleaned, unserviced, unpurified. What makes us think that he will be happy if the president will not be happy? That's why God has provided one service provider. One service provider. A legitimate service provider who came from heaven and he became a human being like us. And he died on the cross of Calvary. To pay for our souls. So that we must be redeemed from the curse of the law. We must be redeemed from being servants of hell perpetually. That is why Jesus had the audacity to say, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to God. But by me, I challenge you today, look at yourself. You are driving almighty God's car. When you take it back, in what condition will it be? May God bless you. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever.
unto the Lord. He is worthy, powerful. His name is above all names. He is great, the owner of our soul. Clap those hands unto the Lord. Applaud him, appreciate him for his super powerful. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, Father, we thank you for your word. Yakabo shatala mobo saya. Rikebebo shatakaba. Labute kelebosha. Motelebo si kelebosh. Yaba yaba lekebo la yende. Rikaba shatakelebo. Sinya telanga manta. Sinya telanga sisota. Siti siya bonga. Siya bonga. Siya bonga. Siya bonga. Ke kamali ga chesu. Worth is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Father, we thank you. We love you. We applaud you. We appreciate you. In the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. of the Lord may I usher the drill squad to do their wonderful job of covering the casket of our father in the name of Jesus over to you drill squad we give you all the glory we worship you yes hallelujah you are the we give you all, we give you all the glory. We worship you all. Hallelujah, you are worthy too. Oh, we give you all. remain standing subspent
take our seats in the presence of the Lord. To the Premier of Houting, Premier David Makura, all government officials here, Acting uh, Provincial Commissioner General Masha, the cluster commander from this cluster, Soweto East, General Rampota, the cluster commander, General Kekana, all station commanders here, our pastors, community at large, most specifically, the family of our beloved father, hero, legend, Musungutu, I greet you all in the blessed name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. The Lord is good. All the time. My name is Captain Alfred Monamezi. I'm the minister of the word in the police. Deployed in the provincial head office. I'll be running this program until the end of it at the cemetery. But since the flag has been placed in its own order for our republic, I will request the band to usher our Honorable Premier David Makura as we all rise for him to come and pay his tribute to this wonderful and lovely family. Over to you, Ben. Shall we all rise? Thank you very much. You might be seated. Long live the fighting spirit of Comrade Kabisi Musungutu. Long live. Long live the fighting spirit of Brahaps. Long live. Amanda. Away to Mata. Kiaruna. Thank you very much to the chaplain, Captain Munamedi. I would like to acknowledge our program director, MEC Banyazali Sufi, the family of Msunkutu, Mamsunkutu, Libana, if it is at home, poor, happy, libam, sung, good to come out, let's pray. Lake free state. If it is at home, poor, who bar give it. If it is at home, poor, who archbishop elect, archbishop Botuana, Lima bishop, and members of the clergy, the deputy speaker of the National Assembly. Dateli Chisatsinodi, the Speaker of our Provincial Legislature, Ministers, Deputy Ministers, MECs, Mayors, Members of the Executive, the National Executive Committee, hereby led by Comrade Mondi Gungubele, our veterans, led by Comrade Amos Masondo, the Provincial Treasurer, the Deputy Secretary, and members of our Provincial Executive Committees. From the ANC, the SACP, COSATU, and SANCO, the veterans of the United Democratic Front, the trade union movement, the civic movement, who have joined us today to bid farewell to our leader, representatives of other political parties, 
leaders of government from all spheres, the acting provincial commissioner, Lieutenant General Masha, and all the senior leaders of the South African Police Service, comrades, family, friends, fellow mourners. We have come together today with heavy hearts as we are here in Soweto, in Pimville, to bid farewell to Comrade Habisi Msungutu, whom we fondly refer to at Brahaps, sometimes Comrade Habs, or simply Abuti. We also called him Abuti. It was not just in the family where he was called Abuti. We are here to bid farewell to a passionate patriot of our people, a fearless fighter against all forms of injustice and a principled defender of the interests of our nation at all times. The people of Gauteng have lost a loyal servant, a conscientious soldier, and a tireless defender of their interest. And we know without fear of contradiction that Comrade Nsungutu, perhaps Abuti fought every battle with incredible consistency, with integrity and honor. It is for this reason that the prov provincial government has honored Comrade Habis Msungkutu with a special provincial official funeral because of his passion to serve our people with integrity, because of his fearlessness, because of his loyalty to both the masses of our people and our nation. We are honoring him because he had already earned a special place in the hearts and minds of the people of this province and indeed many across our country, especially in the trade union movement and in the civic movement. So he has earned this honor. He has worked for it. Once more, I hereby convey our condolences to the Msungkuti family on the occasion of this profound loss of a father, of a husband, of a grandfather, of a brother, of an uncle, and in many respects, a cousin. On behalf of the government, we pray to God the Almighty as the ultimate comforter to soothe your pain because only he knows and has the capacity to heal your deep wounds. Only he knows how hurt you are. Of course, we have lost a leader, a, mo a mentor, and a very capable educator. I want to say to Mam Sunkutu, we have seen you as the leaders of the ANC in this province and as the government, we have seen you take care of Ntatem Sunkutu. We know you did your best. We have seen you take care of him up to the last moment. I also want to say to the children that you should derive comfort from the work your father did for our people. His name is in the roll call of very, very special people in our country. People who fought for freedom. People who fought for our democracy. Brahab's life resembles what Paul said in the book of Timothy, the second 
2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, when he said, I fought a good fight, I have run the race, and I have kept the faith. And Abuti has indeed fought a good fight for the liberation of our people and our country. Nobody can doubt that perhaps fought a good fight. Abuti has run a good race for the entrenchment of democracy in our country and for the promotion of service delivery to the most vulnerable in our society. And very few people can doubt his commitment to this. He has remained faithful to the people of our country, to the revolution and to the movement right up to the end. And ANC members, members of the broad alliance, will have no doubt that perhaps was consistent right up to the end. He lived a life, the kind of life that Ho Chi Minh, the Vietnamese revolutionary, described about himself. And I quote, I have had only one aim in life, to struggle for the good of the country and the well-being of my people. It is for this reason that I have had to hide in the mountains, crouch in prisons. Whatever the moment, whatever the place, I've had a single aim, the good of the people. About personal matters, all my life, I have served the fatherland, the revolution, and the people with all my heart and strength. I should now depart from this world, and if I should depart from this world, I would have nothing to regret except not being able to serve longer and more. Close quote. This is the book of Brahab's life. The only regret he has is that when he was sick, he couldn't do certain things anymore. The only regret he had was that there were times he couldn't do, couldn't be part of our meetings. He couldn't be part of the discussions. He couldn't go out there and engage members of the community. Many of us who know Brahab's and I have known him since the late 1980s when I was just a student leader. Know one thing about him. Everything was always about the people, about the country, about the revolution, and about the movement. As a trade unionist, a civic leader, a UDF activist, an underground operative of the ANC, a member of the PEC in this province, a public representative, perhaps always saw everything through a single lens. The people, the country, the revolution, and the movement. Even in the last few years and months of his life when he was not well, everything was about the people, the country, the revolution, and the movement. Even when he couldn't walk properly, as I saw him in November, even when he couldn't say much, everything was always about the people, the country, the revolution, and the movement. When I visited the family in, in July 2016, after their house was burned down, I had an opportunity to speak to both Brahaps and Mamsungkutu. And Brahaps spoke passionately about fixing the ANC. That was in 2016. I had gone there to talk about half of the house was gone. His interest was about fixing the ANC, fixing the country, and continuing the revolution. Instead of talking about the house, it's Mam Sunkutu who spoke about the house. Of course, at the end, he said, I'm very grateful that my son and I, who were at home, 
were able to survive. That's the only thing he spoke about, about the family and the house. He said, I'm very grateful that my son and I were able to survive. What a wonderful man. When I last saw him in November at his house, where I visited the house with the Dr. Gwen Ramukhopa, the MEC for Health, we had a long chat. He was very peaceful. I agree with you, Queen. He was, he was not well, but he was very peaceful. You could see it, you could mistaken how peaceful he was on his face for someone who was not sick. And when I got there, Mam Sumkutu said, Abutu Kyo Robert. All right. When I looked at him, he was very peaceful. In fact, he even laughed. Little did I know that he could not walk at that time. It was in November 2018. And we had a big battle to convince him to go to hospital. I think that's one battle I have won. There are many battles with Comrade Khaps I couldn't win. In many debates, you can win. But this one, we won that battle. Imam Sumkut, we, it was on the 8th of November. We convinced him that he needs to go to hospital. And he was admitted in hospital at Charlotte Matlake after he had a terrible experience at Chris Hani Baraguana. And I must say that this puts shame on, on us as public officials and public servants. That bad treatment he had at our own hospital here in Soweto, his home township, that bad treatment puts us to shame. That's not the type of public service we want to have. MEC Dr. Gwen Ramukhopa had to apologize many, many times to Brahaps. But you know what he said? He said, ah, kiva atu kiva atu I know, Mam Sunkutu, you were very upset by that experience because you came face to face with it. So that is Brahaps. So in some sense, he was, he, he mis, because of his peace, he misled us to think that he is absolutely okay. But that, that is perhaps. He takes the pain of everybody. He takes that pain into him. And by the time we, we, we succeeded to take him to the bedroom, that's when I realized that he wasn't really okay. So perhaps has left us today. We have lost a leader, a great leader of our people. His life was a life of example. And perhaps life also resembled not only the life of Ho Chi Minh, but his life resembled the life of what Nelson Mandela said in 1961 about himself. For my own part, I quote, I have made my choice only through hardship, sacrifice, and militant action can freedom be won. The struggle is my life. I will continue fighting for freedom until the end of my days, close quote. This is what Brahaps has done. He has continued fighting until the end of his days. He has never wavered when it came to defending the interests of our people. He has never flinched on his loyalty to the people. He has never retreated on matters of integrity. He has never compromised on issues of principle. For many in my generation, many of them don't have an opportunity to speak here, who encountered perhaps we feel greatly privileged to have known him and worked with him. What a wonderful human being. What a humble revolutionary. What a prolific debater. And you know, if you don't know debate, you, you must wait until Brahat speaks when you think the issues are resolved. 
And I, let, I listened to you, Queen, when you spoke about your father. He had this way of throwing science in a debate on politics. And then he'll quote some law of physics and some law of chemistry. When you think, what is the relationship between what we are discussing and physics and chemistry? And then quote the Bible. And then say something about the night of the, the, night of the long knives. The night of the long knives. And that's when we were having a discussion in the run-up to the 2007 Pulukwane conference. And he said, this is the night of the long knives. The one thing about Brahaps is that when he was convinced that this is the direction, he will speak his mind. He will always speak his mind, as he did in the recent, in 2017 when we were going to the Nazrek conference. He spoke his mind as part of the veterans as he did in every other situation. Brahaps was also a very skillful organizer and negotiator. But he had a very shrewd and somewhat naughty sense of humor, especially in debate. He was a very insightful educator. Something possibly more important given the times we are in, Abuti was incorruptible. He was truly incorruptible. And perhaps that's something that's important for us who remain to serve our country in various capacities. Because greed and corruption is, is singularly responsible for destroying many countries. Greed and corruption is singularly responsible for Steinhoff. Greed and corruption is singularly responsible for BBS. Greed and corruption is singularly responsible for state capture. Greed and corruption is singularly responsible for many, many bad things that have happened with regard to the use of the public resources in our hands to just enrich ourselves. So it is something quite important to learn, especially after the, the NASREC conference where the ANC has taken a decision, we need to return the ANC to its path. Brahaps, as many would know, was also a very determined fighter for the, the, the rights of workers, particularly as the leader of Porto. He helped to unite workers across the country, including in the Bantu stands. There were many post workers, not just post workers in the Bantu stands. I remember the first time I met him was in Limpopo. I was a student there. He would travel to most of the Bantu stands organizing postal workers. It is something that those of our cadres who are still in the trade union movement today should also use this moment of the departure of Brahaps to reflect on where is the progressive trade union movement in our country. His work also made a huge impact in the civic movement. He responded to President Oliver Tambo's call to make our, our country ungovernable and make apartheid unworkable. He was an activist of the United Democratic Front and did lots of grassroots work and he built, particularly ensured that he built unity across different communities in our province and in other parts of the country. As part of the culture, the non-racial culture and tradition of our movement. He was committed to non-racialism, non-sexism, democracy and prosperity for all. As the MEC in this province, 
Brahaps was amongst those who laid a strong foundation for an innovative, transformative, accountable, and clean government led by the ANC in this province. I am glad that the, the taxi industry leaders had an, had an opportunity to speak about Brahaps because one area where he made a very distinct impact is in fighting crime, particularly in stamping out taxi violence and getting the taxi industry to work with government very well. He contributed to building a modern public transport system in our province. That's why he was called Chisampama. One thing perhaps did, he earned himself a great deal of endearment about how he dealt with issues in the taxi industry. We heard that today. But one thing I knew is that he was fearless. Abuti was, was kind and soft. I think he had this face, but I know that he was feared. He was, he was feared amongst those doing something wrong. So somebody kind, somebody fearless, he was feared amongst those who did wrong. He also deployed his negotiation skills when he dealt with the issues in the taxi industry. That's why many in the industry today still say, I have heard this many times where they say, but Premier, you know, we need an MEC like Kavi Simsungut. So what uh, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Jones was saying, Mr. Ralph Jones was saying here, I have heard this before, that but Premier, we need an MEC like Kavi Simsungut. I want to say to the taxi industry, we are committed as the ANC-led provincial government in honor of Comrade Kavi Simsungut, Firstly, to modernize the public transport system in our, in our province. We need a single integrated, safe, reliable public transport that uses various modes. Taxis have a role to play in there. Buses, trains. And that public transport system must have a single ticket so that if you can use one ticket to move from across the different modes and that the taxi industry must not be on the margins. It must be part of that modern public transport system. That's what Ntatem Sungkutu would have wanted us to do. In 2019, this is this year, we are launching a single ticket. Firstly, we are launching the single transport authority in Gaute. So there will be one transport authority that manages all transport modes the taxis, the buses, including the how train, everything. And we are, also, we are also engaging with national government about metro rail, that transport authority must manage that single transport system. We are also committed to the empowerment of the taxi industry. Brahaps played a very important role working with Braambi at the time and other leaders, other mayors, in the development and rollout of the rapid trans, the bus rapid transit system. Again, we need the BRT to move. There are areas where the BRT is not moving. And again, we want the taxi industry to be part of that move, to be part of that modernization. This we do in honor of perhaps. Comrade Kaps would have also wanted us to be unrelate, unrelenting in building an economy that includes all our people, an economy that works for all our people. He would have wanted us to ensure that all black people, women, young people, people with disability are in the mainstream of our economy. And this is what we are committed to do as the ANC-led government. He would have also wanted a government that reaches out and engages with communities and is responsive 
to issues raised by communities. He would have wanted a government where there's no corruption in our ranks. This idea that the ANC is synonymous with corruption in this province, it is something we must ban from the operations of government. And anyone caught stealing public funds must face the music. That's what perhaps would have wanted us to do. Perhaps would have wanted us to ensure there's no homelessness, there's no landlessness, and there's no poverty and inequality. And it is for this reason that we are continuing to roll out rapid land release. We want our people who can build houses for themselves to have land so that they can build houses for themselves. Because this idea that government must do everything for everybody, government must build houses even for the youth. The youth must go to school, Ms. Lisuf. We must educate young people, young men and young women. We must educate them, ensure they have access to free education up to a tertiary level so that they can build houses for themselves, not wait for a government house as a young person, so that they can look after their children, not their children first, their parents first, so that they can take care of their parents and take care of their own families. That's what perhaps would have wanted. He had the passion for education, and he had the passion for educated young people, and he didn't compromise on that. Perhaps would have also wanted us to invest in social cohesion. We can't afford coming 25 years after apartheid, divisions in our society, racial divisions, racism. Perhaps would have also wanted us to tackle gender-based violence with the same determination he tackled taxi violence. Gender-based violence is something that is destroying the foundations of our society. So comrades and friends, we in the ANC in this province and in the provincial government have lost a leader who inspired us to work for unity, who inspired us to a life of service, who also inspired us to serve without expecting anything in return. And one of the things that I have seen said around, and Mamsun Kutu in her tribute has clarified this, when, when we went to Brahaps all the time, he will say, even when there's some problem, the house was burned, he will say, you know what, if Libato Tusa, he always called me Mongodi. Mongodi means secretary. And, and I was secretary at the time that he was in the legislature. Even now, he still called me Mungodi. He would say, Mungodi, don't worry, the ANC owes me nothing. If there's something you want to do, but the ANC owes me nothing. I joined the ANC. The ANC didn't join me. Even now, about the issue of that incident, when we had to take him, he said, the, o the ANC owes me nothing. I joined the ANC. The ANC didn't join me. But I want to use this last moment to say that I've seen people who say that, who were in social media say, no, the ANC abandoned Ntatem Sunkutu when he was sick. I can tell you, Mam Sunkutu knows that. On behalf of the ANC and on behalf of government, myself and comrade Paul Mashatile, who is our TG, firstly, when he was still our chairperson, and even now when he was our TG, we had always taken active interest in how is perhaps, Mamsun Kutu will always keep brief us, how is perhaps doing? We have always taken interest, keen interest in his health. So this idea that the ANC did not really care, it had abandoned perhaps, 
is typical of fake news. And fake news belong where they belong. Because how can we forget that Temsumputu, the one who dedicated his life to the struggle, the one who has run his race and who has fought a good fight, whose results we can see today. I can assure you many of us would not be leaders, Madiba, I want to think so. Many of us would not be leaders if it wasn't for Brahavs. Many of us would not have had an opportunity to serve our people if it wasn't for Brahavs. So the family needs to know that your family is much bigger. And that family is there is the ANC and the Houghton Provincial Government. That is the family, the, the bigger family of Comrade Habi Simsungput. And even at the last moment, he was just there to offer, to offer counsel. So I would therefore like to go back to the family and say, Le lache hezwe, le runar lache hezwe. But Brahaf's legacy will live on for many, many generations to come. Long live Brahaf's. Long live Comrade Kabisim Sungutu, long live. Long live Abuti, long live. Long live Brahaf's, long live. Robala Kahoto Abuti Galebo. opportunity to thank the premier for the wonderful speech that made us feel home we feel comforted and yet we believe that South Africa will forever be a warm home for all of us thank you very much premier now as we all know beloved that the state president president Ramaphosa have already declared this official I mean this funeral being official it is not going to be declared now. It was declared before. But under that aspect, our poll bearers, as I'm calling them, they will come closer to the casket one by one. Our brigadiers, Pejnath, Singh, Ndebele, Kuboni, Perumal, and Ndao. Those are our poll bearers. We are now going to leave. May we please clear up the way for these pallbearers. Now, beloveds, another announcement is that we all know that we, are, we can all claim that we are a family. We are closest uh, family friends, blah, blah. But as we can see that the Musungutu family, they are a little bit galore or many. Let's try to give the closest space on what I'm going to announce. As we are living inside the church, I will allow the clergy right now to go down and form two, 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 two lines in front of the casket. And then I will follow them as a chaplain. The pallbearers will follow me. And then after the, the, the pallbearers with the casket, it's gonna be senior officers, which is our generals just behind the uh, casket. And then after the generals, the premier will lead the family of Msungutu to exceed following the process that I have already announced. 
then when we arrive outside, that's when we are going to have a formal proceedings and the order of SAP's official funeral, whereby I will release the clergy to get into their cars. While they're getting into their cars, the family will also be ushered into their cars and the government officials. Only the police members and officers are going to march until the certain point. Then we shall meet at the graveside. May I request the clergy to, to move, just move two to two. Try to create a space. And then Paul Beras will be ushered. Then we will follow with the generals. And then the premier and the family will follow us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I also request you that let's work together at the graveside in order to bury our legend in a dignified way and a dignified manner. While they are still coming, allow me to pray this prayer so that we can have a blessing to leave this place. Heavenly Father, we are living with thank you that in Jesus' mighty name, everything worked together for good to all of us who love to hear. We are living, Heavenly Father. May the traveling messes follow us towards, Heavenly Father, the symmetry. And we know for sure that when you are on our side, nothing can disturb us. We thank you in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Comrades, may we observe the moment of silence, please. May we observe the moment of silence, please. Clergies, I requested that we form up. We don't leave right now because we have to also wait for the family to form up. Let's not leave outside. Let's just form up and then wait. The family must also accommodate themselves well.
when you see things not going right in your life, you know who you can run to. Father, we thank you. You are my hiding place. You are my place of refuge. Jesus, I run to you when I'm alone and afraid. You are my hiding place. You are my place of refuge. Jesus, I. 